morning and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii in my first episode of Movement Matters. I'm Christine Linders, a licensed physical therapist. I've been practicing physical therapy for over 23 years in California, New York, Connecticut, and now in Hawaii in a variety of settings such as sports, orthopedics, neuro, and on-site corporate platforms. I'm a board-certified orthopedic clinical specialist. I'm certified in applied functional science, and I have my manual therapy certification. This is my show, Movement Matters. It's designed to bring you the most cutting edge and effective treatment strategies so you can help your body perform better, decrease pain, and get back to doing the things that you love. Today's topic is ankle sprains. In the first part of the show, I'll be discussing how ankle sprains occur, what we can do to heal them fast, and how to prevent another injury in the future. And in the second half, we'll be meeting Jessica, learning how she sprained her ankle, and the critical exercises she needs to heal her ankle fast and prevent future injury and arthritis. Welcome, Jessica. Thanks so much for having me, Chris. I feel so blessed to be here with you. Oh, and I'm so glad to have you. So Jessica and I work together, and so it just so happened that she sprained her ankle a few weeks ago. Yes. And it seems like everybody that I've been talking to lately has been spraining their ankle in beach volleyball, at home, walking down the street, so I thought this was appropriate. So today, we're gonna to be talking about ankle sprains. Ankle sprains, in a study in 2016 I looked up in the New York Times, comprise 45% of all athletic injuries. And of all people, athletic or not, that suffer from an ankle sprain, 33%, that's one third, will suffer another ankle sprain in the future, which puts them at risk for possible arthritis and more joint damage, but worse, as people injure their ankle over and over again, they tend to become a little less active over their lifespan because they have pain or they're afraid that they're gonna lose their balance. So ankle sprains is a big deal, right? It's a very big deal. I mean, I sprained it three weeks ago, Yeah. and I can't tell you, I have been very inactive. I've been taking it easy. I've been babying it. I've been resting it. You know, I've been doing the rice, you know? Yeah. I've been resting, icing, compressing, and elevating. But as far as exercise go, it was like, how much is too much? What should I do? What shouldn't I do? And yep. so I'm so glad to be able to have this chance to talk to you about it. I know, and I also want to ask you, has your ankle sprain or what you're feeling from it the last few weeks, has it interfered with work or has work aggravated it? How has that been for you? Well, work, being on my feet as a licensed physical therapist assistant has, when I'm on my feet throughout the day, very active, working with my patients. Yeah. Yes, I've been wearing an ankle brace to help give me some of that stability that I feel like I'm lacking. And I think you brought one here, didn't I you? I did. I actually brought one of my ankle braces. So this is one that I've been wearing at work. And so it has like these hard sides on it. Yep. And so I've been wearing this one at work. And then I have another one that just doesn't come up as high and doesn't have that portion on it. But it, but I still great. feel achy at the end of my day. Yeah, that's, that's a problem right there with an ankle sprain is the length of time it takes to hurt. But you need your ankle, you need your foot, you need to walk. And I'm glad to see that you're wearing that because it is important to protect the joint and protect the ankle while it heals. So mm -hmm. what happens when you sprain your ankle? I think for anyone that is out there that has sprained their ankle or may in the future, it's important to know what to do when you're spraining your ankle. I have sprained my ankle so many times as a teenager, I think I spent more time on crutches <laughs> than I did uh, playing sports, which is something right. that I really loved. Right. So it's very important to go to your doctor or go to the emergency room or a urgent care center to get checked out. You wanna make sure you rule out a fracture because if you sprain your ankle and you happen to fracture a bone as well, you're gonna need some sort of different treatment. Maybe they will cast you, Maybe they'll put you in a boot. Maybe they'll give you crutches and make you not bear weight on it for a while. In severe cases, people have needed surgery. Right. And I right. mean, and again, there's different severities of sprain. And so sometimes you even need the boot or something that's with a right. sprain. So. That's right. That's right. So you, you go to the urgent care you or the emergency room. You get your x-ray. You rule out a fracture. Right. Usually people leave on crutches with something similar to what you have, an air cast. And they let you know follow up with your orthopedic doctor in a week or two whenever right. you can get in. And what right. I see when people finally get to my clinic is that nothing has been done in that gap of time from when they went to the emergency room to where they got to me. So they've been resting yes. and icing and elevating and compressing the RICE principle, yes. the mnemonic. 
and now they're swollen, they haven't used it or moved it, and they're a little worse off because of that. So that's what I want to show is okay. what to do in the gap from when you right. sprain your ankle to when you maybe would get to a physical therapist or get right. to me in the clinic. And I find that this gap is so much what I wanted to know. After, I mean, literally, like within hours of spraining my ankle, I wanted to know, well, what should I do? Because every patient that I've ever seen hasn't been in this acute phase that I was currently experiencing. So I was like, oh, what do I do now? That's right. So the first thing that you should do is use some sort of light compression. It could be an ACE wrap or something to keep the swelling down. I sit frequently. And one of my other tips that I've given to people who have recently sprained their ankle when I, they were a friend of mine or a patient that happened to come in, I was seeing them from something else, is to heal it short. The most common ligament, I'll get back to that in a second, the most common, common ligament sprained is the anterior talofibular ligament. We call it ATFL. And if we go to image number one, it shows a picture of all the ankle ligaments. And if you could see the one that's in the front, that's the most commonly torn or sprained right. ligament in the ankle. And so if you see the, the bottom of those bones and the upright of the lower leg, leg yeah. it kind of forms a right angle. And so that's what I mean by heel it short. So when you point your foot, that ligament is, tension is put on that ligament. Right. And that's why it typically is torn because people tend to roll their foot out to the side and it's like right. their foot is pointed and rolling inward. Right. So when you are in that gap from when you've gone to the emergency room and then you're coming into the physical therapist or your orthopedic doctor, you don't want to point your foot. You want to do what I call heel it short, heel it in that right angle. And that's where the brace such as you have or uh, an ACE wrap could help to help you heel it um, short. Right. Don't point your foot on purpose. Everybody right. wants to because they want to get range of right. motion. But there's ways to move your foot just gently up and down or a little bit up and a little bit to the side without having to point your foot and potentially re-tearing that ligament or tearing the vital scar tissue right. that is forming, forming in that ligament. Baby scar tissue. We don't want to mess it up. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so the other thing that is safe to do that I tell people is doing toe curls. If we skip to image number six then we could see a little foot doming, which is curling your toes like that. That's completely yes. safe to do early on. You're engaging yes. all the muscles on the bottom of your foot that get weak when you're either not weight-bearing because you're on crutches or you're limping around because your ankle hurts or if you're in a boot. You also lose strength in other areas that weren't affected by the ankle sprain. So toe curls is another easy right. thing that you can do. Which was awesome because you told me about when we met last week and you yeah. told me to start doing some toe curls, which I hadn't really thought about. I was thinking more range of motion and then a little bit of strengthening. And so you were like, yeah, get those toe curls in. And I started off and I was doing my toe curls with a towel. Yeah, that's a great and idea. I noticed that I, I had a really hard time gripping that towel. But now just like three days later, I'm, I'm doing what I can see progress already. That's fantastic. Yeah. So Hawaii, do your home exercise program. That's Absolutely. the important thing. Do That's... these little exercises. It makes all the difference in the world. Even while you're watching TV. <laughs> That's a great time to do toe curls because exactly. you're not thinking about anything. Right. So one of the things that I find uh, puts someone at risk for the chronic ankle sprains, the one I'm telling is 30% of people that have sprained their ankle before will sprain it again, is they need to get the function back of this critical muscle called the peroneus longus. So if we go to image number two, it shows a picture of a foot, and it shows a lot of different tendons and tendon sheaths, but the one we're focusing on is the one that's behind the ankle bone. If you run your hand down your leg, there's that mm -hmm. bump right in the middle of your leg, right yes. next to your foot. These tendons run right behind that ankle bone, and their job as a muscle when your foot is rolling inward or you're going side to side is to contract to prevent your foot from going in too far. So they're a dynamic restraint for an ankle right. sprain, whereas that ligament, the anterior talofibular ligament, it's a mouthful, is a passive restraint. It's a static restraint, right. non-stretchy tissue. But this critical muscle, the peroneus longus, is very important in getting back its function so that you don't become what's called a chronic ankle sprainer or have chronic ankle instability. Right. 
Well, and just really quick, so yeah. like that area that you're talking about that's right behind the ankle, that's exactly where I feel achy at the end of my workday. That's exactly where I feel it. So that's an exercise and a muscle that we need so. to train in Jessica so that she doesn't sprain her ankle again. Yeah. So now, let's go over to Jessica. How did you sprain your ankle? <laughs> okay. What happened? So I feel really silly. But I sprained it twice within um, four days of one another. Oh. So the first time was on a Saturday. I was out playing tennis with my husband. Oh, having and, fun. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're just, you know, hitting the ball. I, I say we're playing tennis. It was, you know, very much just, you know, trying to hit the ball at each other. But anyway, so I was like running to my right side to reach out and hit the ball. And my foot stopped and my body didn't. And oh. so that ankle rolled and I fell down. And so next thing I knew I was on my high knee. Oh. Um, and so, but then after I got, I was able to get up and stand and walk and I even felt like I could play a little more tennis. So I did continue oh, on good. just very light tennis. I didn't really do any running after the balls after that point, yeah. but definitely I still continued with my activity. Um, and then the following Wednesday, I was in my house getting ready to, uh, warm up for some exercises and I was doing some side shuffles and so as I was side shuffling to the right uh, again it was like my foot stopped and my body didn't and again I ended up falling over uh, and this time it felt so much worse oh, than no. it did on the tennis court and I could almost immediately feel swelling yeah. um, within just a few minutes I saw bruising so, I mean I was immediately just icing and sitting on the floor and the workout was <laughs> oh no so the first the first time you sprained it you were able to get back and yes. play tennis did you did you get some good shots uh, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe no he was being really nice and trying oh. to hit the ball right to me <laughs> okay that's good that's right in that dead he's zone a, right he's a great animal. husband and that he just really uh helps me out there whenever oh, i need help <laughs> that's fantastic well in that instance thanks yeah. to your peroneus longus that muscle right. that we were talking about, you didn't actually injure the ligament and you're able to get yep. up and keep going, but right. it probably put that muscle a little bit at a disadvantage. So now fast forward, you're doing a workout in your living room, you're moving to the sideways and you actually did damage that ligament. And yeah. that's what we're talking about with the chronic ankle sprains. And that's the point I want to make to the viewers today is that you could have a small little ankle roll and you brush it off and you're fine and then have another one soon because something could not be functioning well in your foot after the first minor injury that you had. So that's, that's important. Right. That's important. Right. So when Jessica, we met last week for dinner and I said, okay, let me look at this ankle sprain of yours. Yeah. And so if we go to picture number three, what I like to look at in someone the first time I see them after I take the history is what they look like when they walk. And I know this is a difficult picture to see, but her right foot, if you drew a straight line from her big toe up, is more turned out to the right. And so that's the injured foot that she has, is the, the foot on the right side. So I watch people walk because they've been limping. I'm looking for abnormal mechanics that maybe led them to have a sprain if it wasn't an injury or if they were more prone to a sprain. And so if you can see that picture, it's really subtle. And so that's the little things that I look for in the clinic that I can correct to help her better. So a correction for this, if this is you, is to turn your foot in. You wanna look down at both of your feet and turn them so they're more straight or at least to match the good side. That way right. you get the proper functioning of all the muscles. Right. And so we exactly. notice that, we notice that right away. So if you go to uh, picture number four, it's from the back. And so if you look from the back yeah. of Jessica, you can see her right foot. There's a little bit more of an angle to that messy line that I drew. I'm sorry about that. But you can see a little bit more of her pinky toe on the side. And that's another indication yeah. that somebody is walking yes. with their foot out. And we need to have them turn it in just a touch in order for everything to fire all the way up the leg to her glute. And let me tell you, when you drew the lines and took the pictures and showed me these pictures, yeah. I was just floored and I loved seeing the pictures. That's fantastic. Because that's something I can't see on myself. That's fantastic. That's why you go see a physical therapist. Exactly. So, we're going to take a break where I'm talking with Jessica Ellison. This is Movement Matters. We'll be back for more on what to do to heal your ankle sprain fast and get back to doing what you love.
Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life, and the lives of people around you. Tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, y'all. My name is Mitch Ewan. I'm from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and I'm the host of Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy. We're on every Wednesday at 4 o'clock, and we hope that we have interesting uh, guests who talk to us about various energy things that are happening in Hawaii, all the way from PV, the windmills, the hydrogen, most of my heart, electric buses and electric vehicles. So please dial in every Wednesday at 4 o'clock on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. This is Movement Matters. I'm Christine Linders, a physical therapist. This is Jessica Ellison, a physical therapist Hello. assistant. And today we are talking about ankle sprains. So we're gonna pick back up where we left off. Jessica sprained her ankle twice, twice in a week, and we're talking about why that happens and how you're gonna prevent a future ankle injury. So what we're talking about right now is Jessica came and we looked at her foot. So this is what I saw in my exam. So if we go to picture number three, we'll see that her foot is just turned a little bit further out on the right. That's one of the biomechanical faults that I like to look at mm -hmm. when I'm working on someone because you can correct something so small to make a huge difference, and wow. that is an abnormal mechanic. If we go to picture number two, it's from the, picture number four, I apologize. Picture number four, it is from the back of her ankle, and you can see the ankle on the right where I drew these little lines on her ankle there's an abnormal angulation to her heel. And mm -hmm. the toe out influence, which is what I noticed from the front, is very subtle. But you can look over towards her pinky toe, and you could even see the ring toe there. So mm. that's telling me she's walking with her foot turning out, which indicates that the muscles in her lower leg and even all the way up to her glutes aren't firing properly. And I don't want her to have a future sprain. Right. And Neither do I. The, Please. Please help me. <laughs> Let's prevent that for you, because you like yes, to walk, and I, I know. I do. I love to walk. My we husband. did Diamond Head together yes. when I first got to Hawaii, yes, and I loved head. that. We loved it, and we keep talking about going on more hikes. Yes. And my husband and I love, we living in downtown Honolulu here. We love walking around to all the different restaurants and shops and things like that, so walking is vital in my life it's, right now. It's <laughs> wonderful, and I, I want you to be able to do it. You want to be able to do it. Yeah. This is paradise that we live here in Hawaii, and we want, we're here because we want to enjoy those things, right? Right, absolutely. Okay, so let's look at picture number five. This is something else I like to look at when I'm seeing someone with a lower body injury, and that's their single leg balance. So Jessica had an injury on her left leg in the past, so I tested that first, and she was a little, what I call, in technical terms, wobbly. But when I got her on her right leg, as you see here, it's the fact that her upper body is leaning the other way that shows me something's wrong as well, in addition to her being wobbly on that ankle. So I like to look at single leg balance because those little ligaments in our ankle, they contain organs that mm -hmm. give your brain information about how fast a joint is moving how far a joint is moving and if it's in danger. And that's what would elicit that peroneus longus muscle to fire to say, hey, my ankle is moving too far, too fast, through too much range. I need to fire that muscle and try to stop them from spraining their ankle. And that's right. why I look at the single leg balance. Right. right. Because we want to fire up those proprioceptors. We want them to work properly because those are the things that give our brain information about where we are in space. Right, it's so many things firing at a time and so much to happen. And so it is, it's definitely training. So now I have to ask you because in the clinic, we mm -hmm. have people stand on those 
foam pads uh -huh. and the Bozu balls, the Bosu. which are those half things. Have you stood on that? I stood on a Bosu ball very briefly. I actually pulled mine out of the closet and pumped it up. Very and, good. And <laughs> very good. On, on Sunday. And so, um, yeah, I stood on it very very briefly. I decided not to really uh, do too much without um, knowing exactly what I should and shouldn't be doing. I wanted to make sure that I, I cleared it with my, my PT. That's right. That's <laughs> right. I'm so glad to hear you say that because I think what people sometimes can do with an ankle sprain is do a little bit too much and maybe think it's not as severe, especially when you've gone to the doctor, you don't have a fracture, and you think, oh, it's a sprain, it doesn't sound that bad, it feels that bad, but it doesn't sound that bad. So it is important to know how to rest it, heal it short, rest, ice, compression, right. elevation. That's the rice for anybody who doesn't know. So right. very and good. What I felt though is that it was like I had enough knowledge to get me in trouble. <laughs> like I knew enough. Okay, we want to get flexibility, we want mobility, and then we want strength. And so I was just like, well, I can walk on it. And so actually, um, after that Wednesday sprain Thursday, I actually went and uh, walked in the pool. So my building oh. has a pool, and I actually went and did aqua walking. And so I walked forwards, I walked backwards, I did sidestepping. For 30 minutes. Oh. And I was hurting. The next day? I was hurting that night. Ouch. And so, yeah, so I, I needed you right away. I apologize. I, so I think what you want to tell everybody is so awesome, like this gap period yeah. of what, I mean, so this is just so important, and I feel so passionate about this, you know, that we, yes, we're giving some knowledge, but make sure that you use this knowledge wisely. <laughs> that's, that's so perfect, and that reiterates the Heal your tendon short, do the toe curls, keep your ankle safe, wear the ACE wrap, wear the ankle brace that Jessica brought in and showed that has some stability on the sides because you know your proprioceptors aren't going to be firing because you've torn that ligament or you've injured that ankle. All right. So that yeah, brings exactly. us to the treatment. Yay! What do we do? So <laughs> number one, I correct how people walk. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to limp. I want you to turn your foot straight so it matches the other one. Mm -hmm. If you're a person that's both toed out, you look down and you make them look the same. Okay. You turn the injured one to match the other one. That's important because we all have different body structures. Same thing goes if you're pigeon toed and you're walking right. with one foot out. You have to try to match right. your symmetry. normal. Symmetry. Symmetry is key. That's the word. Absolutely. Symmetry. Symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's simple to correct. And most people will tell me, wow, I, when I turn it in, I feel that I'm really turning it way in, but when I look down, like you said with the pictures, when I look down, yeah. my foot's actually straight. So yeah. go easy, wear your ankle brace to support it because you definitely want to prevent injury, but start moving better. Mm -hmm. So if we go to picture six again, that's the toe curls. That's the easiest thing to do. I tell people, curl your toes, like you said, Jess, on the, on the sofa, curl them, stand on one foot, curl them while you're watching dishes, Curl them while you're sitting, curl them while you're having dinner, curl your toes, curl your toes, curl your toes. You need those intrinsic muscles all, all along the arch of your foot so that while you're healing from your ankle sprain, you don't get things like plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis because you still right. need six weeks to heal that ligament. Right. You have to keep it safe for right. at least that period of time so that you heal it short while right. you're doing toe curls. Right. And while you're doing number seven, which is TheraBand eversion. I like to add that as early as I can, as long as there's no pain. So this right. green band is a little tough. It's a moderate. It's, yeah. a, it's a moderate one. It was the one that I you used. <laughs> so <laughs> yellow band with a TheraBand brand is the easiest. Yes. And sometimes what I'll have is in this image, it looks like I'm moving my foot out to the side. But what you can do in an early ankle sprain is just hold your foot straight up so it's a 90 degree angle put the band and then just hold your foot into the band. So that's right. what's called an isometric contraction. Right. Like you're, you're not, not moving. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're just not, not letting the band pull your foot. You're activating it just enough to yes. not pull it. It keeps it safe. safe. It activates the peroneus yeah. longus. It activates your anterior tibialis on the front. It activates all the muscles that you need. And even better, the isometric contraction does what I've called the pump and drain. I think I heard that somewhere before. I call it the pump and drain. So you just contract and let it relax, contract and let it relax. And that works on the area below the skin, the fascia, where all the mm. scaffolding is underneath your skin and all the fluid travels under our body. So as you contract and relax, 
all that fluid goes out. So it helps with edema reduction. It helps with the reorganization of the scar tissue and the collagen that is rushing in there because you have an injury. Yeah. And I know that it works because the last time I blew out my ankle, it was probably four or five years ago. I was in a beach volleyball tournament. A girl fell under the net. I won the point, though. (laughs) And I stepped and my whole leg rolled over on her foot. I heard a crack. And I had, I was right in the middle of the summer in Connecticut. I had volleyball tournaments every weekend, both days, driving down to New Jersey. And I had a stick shift. And it was my right ankle. So I did the pump and drain. I took the week off from work because I'm standing all day long. I got myself a boot. I wrapped it at night. I kept it in that position to heal it short. And I did from the beginning. Toe curls, I did pump and drain. And when we talk about pressing your leg out in the early stages, you're pressing a nickel's worth of force, just enough to engage the muscle. Just enough. Just enough, right? And then as you go through that day one, two, three, week four, week five, then you're really pushing because it's pain-free. The muscles are strong. Pain Mm -hmm. is your guide. Don't do it if it hurts. You have to have little small movements make all the difference in the world, right? right? Oh, absolutely. I totally agree. I am glad to hear that you got the point. <laughs> I did get the point. This, this girl was a, a, my friend and I, my volleyball partner, and I call her the Olympic. She was Polish. I'm Polish as well. A beach volleyball player. She mm-hmm. had us 10 to 0 jump serving us off the court. We finally uh. got the pass, set it up, hit the ball. They dug it, and it was coming over the net on one, and I went up to block it, and she came up with me, but I won the joust. <laughs> but I lost my ankle. My ankle lost the joust. I <laughs> won right. the joust. Hey, hey. Okay, so let's look at image number uh, eight. So this is important right now, and it's stretching your calf. What happened? Okay, great. So this is going to stretch your calf, and why we do this is we want to make sure that you have the adequate ankle range of motion. It's safe. You're not straining the ligament. That's your gastrocnemius and your soleus on the back. And oftentimes people from limping or that bone that's right underneath your lower leg bone will get pulled a little bit forward when you tear that ligament. So you want to make sure you have enough range for it to sit back where it needs to be. And then picture number 10, this is working on the other muscle. Uh, Picture number 10 is working on balance. So this model has very good balance. Her Mm -hmm. ankle is completely healed. So I often tell people, hang on to a surface, put your hand on the surface, pick the other foot up, and then just tap your hand on and off so that you can work on balance. Yeah. And be safe because you still need to protect your ankle. You can also put the brace like Jessica showed your ear cast early on if it doesn't hurt right. and work on your balance right away. You're not going to harm your body right. working on balance. Use pain as your guide. And to balance on uh, stable surface before I go to that BOSU ball. Yes. Start <laughs> with a stable surface. Do it on your floor, a okay. hardwood floor. All right. So I hope that Jessica and I oh. helped you all learn more about your ankle and how to keep it healthy, how to rehabilitate it if you've injured it, especially if you're in that gap. And please go see a physical therapist. This is Movement Matters. I'm Christine Linders. This is Jessica Ellison. Thank you so much, Thank Think you. Tech, for having us on today. Thank you, Thank Jessica. Thank you so much. This was wonderful to be on. This was and awesome. I just can't wait to hear how everyone loved it. Me too. Me too. <laughs> We'll have to provide that for everybody in our next show. Exactly.